Hello, this is Neil Feit of the SUNY Fredonia Philosophy Department. This video is intended mainly for my Fall 2012 Intro Deductive Logic students, Phil 116, and what I'm going to do is talk briefly about um, the homework policy in this class and give you a little bit of an introduction and tutorial to using the web-based uh, Power of Logic web tutor uh, for doing logic problems. Basically, what we're going to have this semester uh, we're going to have seven homework assignments over the course of the semester, but you won't be handing in specific exercises or problems. Instead, you're going to hand in a report that looks like what you see on the screen here, a homework report. And I'm going to walk through that for um, uh, uh, just a few moments here. Um, you could find these reports on uh, the ANGEL course website, download them, and fill them out electronically. If you have any problems with that, just get in touch with me and let me know. We could try to fix it. Um, so here's uh, the homework report number one. As you could see, it has a, a due date here. What you could do is click in the box, put in your name. I'll put in my name. There's no need to enter or anything like that. If you press tab for some reason, you could go up here next to the save icon and undo that. I'd like this to all fit on one um, piece of paper. And at the end, you will print it out. I'm going to re request that you hand in a hard copy of each homework report. At the top here, you see for each of these homework report templates, I've made seven of them available on the ANGEL site for our course, gives you the exercises. Okay, um, Basically, you're going to do a lot of these exercises, over half, as many as possible, and you're going to fill in a few items for me. Part A here is a summary in one or two sentences. Summarize the concepts and the kind of work done for this assignment. Click in the box and give me one or two sentences. Part B, you're going to do a little bit of self-assessment. If um, your level of effort on this assignment was high, maybe you felt that you gave it 9 out of 10, I'm going to ask you to underline 9, for example. Highlight it, go up here, underline it. Okay. Um, rate the overall quality of the work. And optionally, you could give me some comments, including suggestions for improving class time. If you want to re review anything in more detail, tell me here. Um, I am going to ask you to choose a mistake that you made and paste that problem here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and come back to that in a few moments. Um, and to tell me about uh, your learning as a result of this mistake and an optional final comment as well. Okay, So I am going to strongly encourage you to do your homework this semester on a web-based platform called the Power of Logic Web Tutor, and you can access this from our course Angel page. Okay. Well, here's the Angel page for our class. At least this is what it looks like when I log into it. And by the way, in the lessons area, uh, I'm going to put handouts on course material. So if you miss a handout or lose a handout, you could find it here. And here we have a homework folder. I'm going to click on that. and. I'm going to hand out hard copies of the homework assignment sheet, but here you could find homework assignments for the whole semester on a single sheet, as well as homework uh, guidelines and requirements, and the report template. So we were just looking at this homework report template one. Okay, You can download it here, save it to your computer, rename it if you want, print it out when you're done. Okay, We also have a resources area. I am giving out hard copies of the course syllabus, but if you ever lose yours and want another one or want to access it electronically, you could do so here. And we have course resources useful links here. I'm going to expand this. Um, I am giving you a link to the Power of Logic Web Tutor. Um, by the way, this video and subsequent videos, I plan to have 11 videos in all, will be also linked here as the semester progresses. Okay, So you could click on this link. You could see the URL up here if you want to get there some other way. Um, what we are using is uh, you probably either have um, the custom book for this class, which is uh, selected chapters from the Power of Logic 4th edition, or perhaps you might have bought the whole 4th edition uh, somewhere. Um, by the way, there is a new version. Very recently, they came out with a 5th edition of this book. Um, I haven't really checked out in detail the differences. I, I suspect it's not until chapter 9 um, that the, the exercises will be a lot different. But basically, we're going to be doing, and, and our custom book has chapter 1, and then 7, 8, and 9. We'll be getting to chapter 9, predicate logic, later in the semester. Okay, But for example, if you um, Google power of logic, you are 
probably going to get to this website if you select the first hit. And um, you see for a limited time the fourth edition website will remain available here. Um, that's what I want you to use. If you click on the Web Tutor, this is the fifth edition site. You'll see that it's basically a, a blue and gray tone. We would want to be seeing the fourth edition site with sort of a brownish gray tone. Okay. And by the way, this is, um, I'm told, available um, until the end of 2012. It's free. You don't have to register. You don't need a password or anything like that. And what it has is all of the exercises from our textbook and in most cases very good uh, feedback for um, giving you answers or help as the case may be. Okay, So I'm just going to spend uh, just a, a minute or two just sort of going over a few things here. Okay, um, You could pick chapter one like this and you see chapter one, each chapter in this book is divided into sections. Section 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 and so on. Um, in the print copy of the book the exercises for a section come after that section, and then there's the next section and the exercises for the next section. There is an answer key after each chapter. Um, so, so for selected exercises in the book, we have an answer key uh, at the end of the chapter. The good thing about um, this web-based program is that answers are given to all the exercises, not just starred exercises. So for example, I might click on the 1.1 Part C exercises here. Okay. Um, in this particular case, it gives me a few choices. I could see them all, I could see random, or I could do a user choice where I just select a few. If, if I select show me the problems, here it shows me all the problems in exercise 1.1 part C, and it gives me the instructions. It is important to read the instructions um, to a given exercise up on top here. Okay. Um, if I go back and select user choice and show me the problems, it gives me all the exercises, but it also allows me to kind of check um, a couple that I really want to do. Let me check two and four. You could check any or all of them or just one and scroll down. Notice I checked uh, two and four. Um, those are the ones that I chose. Generate my quiz, it happens to say. And here it gives me those two that I selected. Notice that it does renumber the answers, the um, exercises here. Um, in your homework report template, I'm going to ask you to paste or type an exercise that you got wrong the first time you tried it here. And so be careful here. Um, these are really two and four, even though they're renumbered one and two here. So it might be best just to, to go through all the exercises. So you could I could get back to more from chapter one here. I guess I was doing 1.1 part C. Okay, so it might be better to do them all. And by the way, you don't have to do them all. You could just do a selected one. So for example, suppose I, I do number four here. Okay, I have an argument here. If Lincoln was killed in an automobile accident, then Lincoln is dead. That's first the first premise. Here's premise two. Lincoln's not dead. So hence, Lincoln was not killed in an automobile accident. And I see I have two choices. It's either valid or invalid. This, this exercise has to do with determining the validity or invalidity of the argument. Uh, let me pick invalid just for fun. And I'll scroll down here and check my answers. Okay. You see, if I didn't answer a question, all it says is you didn't answer this question. But um, for number four, I see that it gave me a, an X and it says my answer was uh, is incorrect. Okay. Um, if your answer is correct, it gives you a check mark, a green check mark. And it gives you a little explanation here. Okay. Since this is not a, a, a content video, I'm not going to go over it right now. But um, this is, in fact, a valid argument, so my answer of invalid was incorrect. Okay, um, Maybe I thought that, um, hey, Lincoln is dead, so I thought that, that this false premise made the argument is in invalid, perhaps. Okay, um, You could go back to the main menu at any time from the navigation bar here on the left. Okay, um, Soon, we'll be getting into formal or symbolic logic, a system of logic that we're going to call statement logic, chapter 7 of the textbook. Um, it'll be the second chapter that we do. And, you know, maybe I'll select 7.1 part C. And here's some English sentences that I'm supposed to symbolize into statement logic. Uh, maybe I'll try this one. Coffee isn't good if it isn't fresh brewed. Okay, so I can click in the box here. Um, coffee isn't good if it isn't fresh brewed. So true. 
Okay, so I'm told G means coffee is good and F means coffee is fresh brewed. So if it isn't fresh brewed, then, well, you could, if you ever need help here to, to type in a symbol or any kind of help for that matter, um, you could always select help and it tells me, oh, if I want an arrow symbol, and I don't want to get ahead of myself too much, but that's going to be our symbol for if then, then you could type in um, hyphen dash or simply a, a great, hy excuse me, hyphen greater than or simply greater than. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to click here. I'm going to type in greater than and it actually shows me an arrow. Okay, check my answer and um, yay, it's, it's correct. Okay, um, so that's a little bit about using this web tutor and in most cases if you get something wrong um, it tells you not only that you got it wrong but in many cases it gives you very helpful um, feedback and help okay um, so before I finish this video uh, remember from the um, homework report template I'm asking you to paste something that you got wrong so let me go back to that chapter 1.1 1. 1. Um, I believe it was number four that I got wrong. Okay. Um, what I just did was highlight it, and now I'm going to click and copy this. Okay. And I'll go back to my um, homework report. And here, what I'm going to do is just where I have to choose one mistake, I'm just going to click here and paste it. Okay. Like so. And in fact, um, I'm asking you to identify this. So this was, uh, it was 1.1 um, as I recall, part C as I recall, um, number four. Okay, that's so I know what I'm looking at when I see your homework report template filled in here. Okay, um, maybe I'll delete that just to save a little space. And I'm asking you to, um, do you know why your first answer was wrong? Well, I said this argument was invalid. In fact, it's valid. So maybe, maybe, um, Yes, I know why I was wrong. I thought, excuse me, I'm not a good typer. I thought a valid argument needs to have true premises. But now I realize only a sound argument needs true premises. That's something like that to show me a little bit about uh, how your skills just on one specific problems have improved as a result of doing the homework. Um, if you're perfect, if you did not make any mistakes at all, you could just tell me that. Okay? Um, you could give me a final comment at the end if you want to review any material or, or any other comment that you'd like me to read over. And I'd like you to keep this whole report to one side of a page, if at all possible, and that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay? Well, I hope this little tutorial was helpful. I'll be giving more contentful videos and making them avail uh, available to you as the semester proceeds.